great gains. 23.8. Looks strong. I think he's started to ease up a little now, Mike, as he starts to think about his prone shoot. It looked that way. And Morovitz, I think, is uh, and behind him, Hofer from Italy. I think they are they are moving the fastest in this lead five. Yeah, Morovitz. Well, Morovitz knows this track better than anybody. Yeah. Roller skiing on it in the summer months. He's just seen Hoffa behind him. I think he won't be too concerned. Hoffa's a great skier. We've seen that over the last few years. But he's uh, he suffered a little like Clement Power. Hasn't had the consistency on the range. Will it come tonight? It may well do. And be a fantastic opening for the Italians. But at the moment, it's the defending champions who are first to shoot on this final leg. Svensson works his way from lane 30 all the way up to lane one. And he looks very, very calm. The crowd rise to their feet as their man, Andre Morovets, 13th in the World Cup rankings, comes into the stadium. The Czechs, incidentally, were eighth last time in the World Championships in Rupolding. Norway, of course, were first. Have a look at the foresight for Svensson. It's been raised up by, by at least one and a half centimetres. The wind has certainly increased. Uh, you can see from the telltale flag, Svensson, no mistakes at all. That's just the way to do it. Russia now. Malishko has had to push hard. He's had no choice. Quite a lot of preparation for Martin Foucault on that first shot but uh, the first three have gone down as you'd expect number four of France moving up into second place they certainly are and now the battle is on for third oh. another miss for Russia a chance now for the Czech Republic and there is no team they'd rather beat than the Russians so one more miss from Russia and they are on the penalty loop and the oh. Czech Republic go into the bronze medal position with another five kilometers remaining and Russia have a 150 meter penalty to pay but uh, instead of fighting the Russians the Czechs now have to concentrate on beating Italy Lukas Hoffer has done exceptionally well in the prone position and he's kept himself within six seconds of the bronze medal but how much damage has that done to the Russian chances that was amazing I think that's really has knocked the Russian uh, Malishko's confidence will be hurting like heck the wind did uh, change from the left but the others got it right some of the teams now beginning to struggle you can see that the flags just flickering from the left well maybe the Czechs will be starting to think in terms of silver medals rather than bronze medals because they're not that far off the French but it's still Norway leading welcome back to Nova Mesto, we've just had uh, a replay as we look at the order of uh, Svensson's shots and Mike, uh, a pretty good grouping from Emil Hegler Svensson showing that uh, I think he was skiing well within his limits on that first two and a half K. I've, I've got to say the wind was difficult for Svensson and if he, if he didn't just compose himself, he took quite a bit of time to recover and a lot of his shots were dropping down in that uh, five o'clock segment of the golf ball size target uh, but he was so steady he got them. This man looks so steady, he doesn't even look like he's putting effort in, Foucault. Well, Martin Foucault came out of the range 20 seconds behind. He's taken another five seconds off Svensson. Now, one one change in uh, Foucault this season, Mike, from last year, where he was winning just about every race in the last lap, uh, is he hasn't shown that spark over the last couple of kilometres that he had last season. And I'm just concerned that he put a burst in on the first loop. He's definitely pushing now to try and catch Svensson. If he gains, if he catches Svensson before the end of the second shoot, then... How much is he going to have to give over the last two and a half K? I'm not convinced he'll outdo the great Norwegian this time. I'm not sure. It's going to be tight at the moment, 15 seconds. Foucault is going to shoot slower, you'd expect, than Svensson. And Malishko looks a man destroyed, having done that penalty loop and the psychology of going from second to, what is he, fifth or sixth? Well, fifth, in fact. Look at that. There's a man who is uh, pushing hard for his team. He is the favourite to clean up here in Nova Mesto. Martin Foucault, he's uh, 
he's on fire tonight, dancing his way he's up, up the climbs, and he certainly didn't have that dynamic style in uh, Antolz for the last of the World Cup. So I think uh, he's back on form. He's used the 17 days off very, very well. Some teams have gone to altitude. The French, uh, as usual, they go home for a bit, and then they regroup, I think, at the Sandrine B uh, Biathlon Centre, actually, just for some, uh, just to build team spirit. And the Norwegians are renowned for being a team of brilliant individuals. The French are, are renowned for being a brilliant team. <laughs> Do you know, that, that sums it up, isn't it? Over many, many years, that has been the case. Although the Norwegians, I believe, are beginning to come together more as a team. But, yeah. but they, they've been allowed from young ages to evolve and develop their own methods, not their methods, but the freedom to think and do their own training. And it works. Well, I, I certainly approve of that. I think that's something that uh, the Scandinavians have done well over the years, combining their, their uh, athletic education with their academic education and, of course, giving them time to do the training as well. And uh, that means that they're all perfectly capable of training themselves. But at this level, you need a little bit more psychology. You need the boost that you get from uh, being in a good, strong team. I think so. The, that, that feeling of team, I'm sure it accounts for one or two percent. Like the French will, uh, as we've seen, Boeuf just gave everything for the team. And now Martin Foucault is doing the same. 15 seconds behind at the last split. Is he getting any closer? Just a bit, just a bit. So he's done exactly the same as he did on the first lap. Pushed hard for the first K, then starts to ease down as he prepares for the second shoot. Another 500 metres to go to get the pulse under control for the standing shoot, the final shoot in this race. Norway so far have missed three targets. That's a fantastic record. The French have missed seven. Uh, Italy still the best team out there. Only two misses so far tonight. And if Italy remain on two they certainly deserve a medal the Czech Republic in third have five misses so far tonight the Russians were going well until Malishko took his turn and he of course with those uh, four misses on that last shoot they now have a total of nine with one penalty loop incurred and that's why Russia find themselves almost 55 seconds off the pace of the leaders so Svensson the moment of truth if he goes five with five, Mike, surely the gold medal is going back to Norway. Well, he certainly will have seen what Talia Bo did to, to, to shoot in there. I think it was 22 seconds from stopping to starting moving again. Now, Svensson is going to have to work hard not to be distracted by the arrival of Martin Foucault. It's impossible not to notice it. The crowds there cheering for more of it. Now, Foucault has got to be quick, and he needs five out of five. Now the pressure is on, and the fact that Norway's last target went down, I think, distracting Martin Foucault. So now he's going to have to make up some 16 seconds in two and a half Ks. It can be done, but it's going to be a very, very difficult task. The silver medal, I think, is going the way of France. The big question is, will the Czech Republic, the host nation, get themselves a medal on the first night of these championships? It is down to one Andre Morovitz. Here he goes. Five targets between himself and Glory. That oh, is how it's done. Amazing. Uh, Lukas Hoffer <laughs> throws one wide. And the crowd have gone absolutely oh. berserk. What a fantastic story. Commiserations for the Russians. It was going so well until Malishko came in for the prone. I think we have to sympathise, Mike, because the wind certainly increased when Malishko was shooting. But others, like Svensson, managed to cope. They did. They did. Those around Malishko coped. I think Malishko just came in too hard. What a pity for uh, the Russian. They really expected this goal. Yeah, we, we had an interview with the French head coach, Maze just before the start of the race, and he said the key to gold here is reading the changing wind conditions. Maybe the Russians got a little complacent. We've had such an easy night so far that that little puff of breeze that came and has now gone, catching them out. And if you don't see it while you're looking through your sights, it can catch you out so easily. There's Foucault. Uh, this is a steep hill. It's deceptive, very deceptive. But Foucault has to give everything now to close this gap quickly. 
The margin 13.9 when he came out of the range. We'll get another one uh, at uh, one kilometer on this last lap with 1,500 meters to go. Martin Foucault needs a lot of support, but he can see Svensson ahead of him, and that will certainly be a big boost. He's getting closer at the moment, but Svensson <laughs> maybe just like a coiled spring. Oh. He is waiting, waiting to explode. But I, yes, I don't think there's any faster last lap man than, than Svensson. Even when Foucault's at his best, Svensson and seems to be able to take an extra seven, eight seconds out of himself on I this last. Well, I, I would disagree simply because of what we saw Fokada do in uh, Rupolding last year. But what I would say is I don't think there are many more competitive than Svensson. When, when it comes to winning by a couple of inches, he's the man who's going to hang on. So through they go, six kilometres completed. They've got another 1,500 metres to go from a margin of 13.9. Has Fokada settled for silver? Yep. It's Fenton is so too strong. That's two seconds he's shaved off, but you can just see the body language. Foucault is beginning to die. Well, the story, the main story of the night <laughs> is this man. It's amazing. Andre Moravets, who is on fire. And don't forget the rest of the Czech team. Vitkova, Sukolova, both did good work. Sukolova maybe not quite as quick as she would have liked on leg number two. Yaroslav Sukup was very solid for the Czech Republic. But Andre Moravets has been quite sensational. I wonder whether he stuck his hand up and said, I will take the last leg. But remember, two years ago, he was so unreliable in the shooting range, Moravets. Three years Years ago without a doubt and uh, he had 10.5 million Czech Republic uh, public watching that shoot and he coped so well 10 out of 10 yeah Martin Foucault has given up the chase 11.8 uh, uh, behind when we last saw I think that margin may well grow but has he just given as, up but I don't <laughs> think so <laughs> just as I say that Whoa. he goes again is he going for the last 800 meters Oof. They just have to stay on their feet, it's not easy, it's, uh, it's softer and with ice underneath now. So Norway, who took some time to get a medal in this event uh, in 2007, 8 and 9, they finished off the podium, they weren't far away, but I think uh, they were a team, they were certainly a team guilty of not putting their best runners into the mixed relay, trying to save them for the other events, but now that the mixed relay has grown in... Uh, in status, I think uh, I think Mickey Grice was right, Mike. Uh, this is one. There's been so much talk about the mixed relay that all the teams now want this one as much as any other. It's a big deal, and with a gold medal at the Olympic Games riding on this race as well next year, they're taking it so so seriously. In fact, I just want to look further down. Germany uh, in 13th position. They were one of the favourites today, the German team, and that, that that's what can happen in this relay. You make one mistake and you're punished. It's so competitive now. Poland started so well, Patrick, down uh, after the last shoot, down in 10th position. Belarus were 8th, they're down in 11th. And Americans from 17th ranked, they're in 7th position after the last shoot. Yeah, it's been a very good run from the Americans. We saw them, we haven't seen Life Nordgren, the cameras focusing on the leading teams quite rightly. But America only 132 behind the lead. They've got a good fight with Slovakia. They're only some uh, 11 seconds clear of the Slovaks at the moment. And Dmitry Malishko of Russia is some... Um, 16 seconds clear of uh, USA. I think he'll be able to hold on to that position, but the Russians will not be happy. They came here for gold, and they're going to go home with nothing. I tell you what, uh, Andre Morovitz is beginning to close the gap substantially on uh, Martin Foucault. Now, uh, has he looked back? I don't think he has. But Svensson into the stadium. What a, what a great feeling that has to be. Well, Morovitz 